Kia ora koutou and Nissan Bula Minaka and uh, Fakalofa Atu. Welcome to Nuan Language Week 2021 uh, and welcome to our first webinar for the week. We're doing several this week, Digital Pacific Team, but welcome uh, to our webinar hosted uh, by the Digital Pacific Team and with National Library of New Zealand. Um, and we're really excited to have a few of you here joining us in our Zoom webinar as well as people watching a few people watching on Facebook. So if you have any questions as we go through, um, please uh, chuck them at us either in the Zoom chat or in the Facebook live chat. It'd be great to hear from you and we can answer any questions. So um, before we get started into our agenda, I thought we'll go around the room and introduce ourselves. Um, my name is Tim Kong and I'm the program manager of the um, Pacific Virtual Museum Pilot. Uh, my main role today is to host this event uh, to be the technical guy that makes sure all the bits and pieces go together well. Uh, and yeah, also to answer any questions you might have about our website and our project. Uh, and I'll throw to Tapatu to introduce herself. My name is Tapatu and I'm the Engagement Manager for Digital Pacific. Um, today I'm going to be showing you some of the collection items um, tagged nowhere in National Library and also Alexander Trimble Collections. Uh, yeah, um, my name is Ulu and I'm the content analyst here at Digital Pacific and I'm also the second cameraman. Cheers. The Alexander Turnbull Library. So my name is Suliana Bear and I'm the, um, I work at the Alexander Turnbull Library, which is under the National Library of New Zealand and I'm the research librarian specialist in the research and the RST. Oh my God. Fantastic. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you to each of you. Um, and yes, I'm joining you from uh, what looks like my home village of uh, Nalotu in Fiji, but actually I'm at my house uh, joining you, uh, whilst uh, Tapatu, Soliana and uh, Ulu, um, cameraman Ulu, are joining us from the National Library of New Zealand building in Molesworth Street in Wellington. So um, our focus today is on collections uh, of Nui, uh, and we're going to spend a couple of minutes just talking about what we do with our project, which is digitalpacific.org, uh, and demonstrating that. So I'll just bring my screen up. Uh, and when I've finished sharing my section, what will happen is um, uh, the uh, team will demonstrate and show some objects and things that are on display uh, and are available uh, for you to access inside the National Library of New Zealand. So on the screen that you're looking at right now, we have our website, digitalpacific.org, uh, and with a special um, uh, new way and greeting for this week. Uh, and our site is um, funded uh, by the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade in Australia and implemented by the National Library of New Zealand uh, here in Wellington in collaboration with the National Library of Australia uh, in Canberra. And our site and our project is designed to make visible and accessible Pacific cultural heritage, uh, digitized cultural heritage um, for people in the Pacific and of the Pacific. And for us, that's quite an important distinction. Uh, we know that there are obviously many uh, locations across the Pacific, but there are also a lot of Pacific people based um, away from the Pacific, who've moved away um, for any number of reasons, maybe who are born overseas as well. So um, when we say in and of the Pacific, uh, we want the Pacific diaspora, as well as uh, people based in the Pacific to be included in our in our project. And what we do is we um, work with our content partners, of which we have about 30 currently, uh, who have uh, digitized cultural, uh, uh, digitized cultural heritage items, records, photos, maps, and so on, uh, that are available publicly on websites. Um, and what we do is we take uh, the small details about those records and show them through our site uh, and and um, make it easy for you to find them. So instead of um, as a as a Nuean person, instead of having to go to thirty three different websites or any other uh, museums and galleries and libraries that we don't have. Um, if you come to our site, you can quickly access them just by using a, a, a simple search interface, but also some filtering as well, which we'll I'll demonstrate in a bit. And the idea is that, uh, as a, someone said to me the other day, it's a one-stop shop for finding 
uh, the many thousands of records that are held in institutions like libraries and galleries, um, often far beyond um, the Pacific. And so that's our hope with how this, this project works. So um, I'll do a little bit of a demonstration about it. If you had any questions, um, please just interrupt me as we go through, uh, either in the Zoom chat or in, in Facebook, and we'll send them through. So um, our site is um, designed to hopefully reflect some of the Pacific back and some of its visual pieces. Um, we want to make it easy for you to find your location, your island. Uh, and this week, we're focusing on Niue. Um, but we have uh, most of the island locations of the Pacific listed here. And if you select uh, Niue, you're going to see, in our case, about 4,200 records uh, tagged in some way with from Niue. Um, we don't uh, manually pick and select each of these items. We rely on the metadata uh, that comes from our content partners. Uh, and so what, what can happen is whilst we are saying that these are items tagged new way, um, there might be more than this 4,207 uh, that are tagged new way uh, or are from new way that maybe don't have the word new way in them um, when we look at uh, the whole across the whole site. So this uh, function here where you're just looking at the island or the location in Niue is just a quick and easy way to to um, get a subset of the images. You can search for the items from Niue in here out of these 4,207. You could type a search string in here uh, and, and search for it there. You can also filter. Uh, the records that you see straight away are, are the most recent ones, what we call the most recent ones that have been harvested. Uh, so in this case, there's a number of videos um, from the Longa Nui's um, YouTube page, uh, and we are um, looking forward to hosting them and, and speaking with Patrick uh, and his team on Thursday, I believe it is, um, with them. So that'll be really exciting. Um, but you can quickly filter by what we've broken it up into what we call media type, which is, is it a text? Is it a video? Is it an image? Is it an object? So in this case, we've got five, uh, 289 images. So let's have a look at what that looks like uh, when it refilters and resets. So now we're only seeing images that are tagged new way uh, in somewhere in the, in the details we have about them. Uh, and in this case, we've got one there, um, a pretty quintessential um, island experience wearing the taro. I'm not sure if that's a taro competition, like the old pumpkin competitions coming up to Halloween uh, or what exactly. Um, but we can see this is held by um, the uh, Museum of New Zealand, Te Papa Tongariwa. Uh, and if you click on the item like I just did, you see a little bit more of the detail around what it is. So here it's a photo by Glenn Jowett purchased in 1999 by the museum. It's got a little bit of detail around what it actually is gives you a bit of a date uh, and some other details. What happens with our site is we don't actually hold any of this con content. So if you select this item, you're always going to go to and land on the, uh, the source of the item. So in this case, the, what we call the content partner. So in this case, this is uh, Te Papa. And you obviously also see the photo in a lot more, in a lot more detail. Uh, and there it is. It's a pretty impressive looking taro. I guess these fellows are going to decide what they're going to do with it afterwards. Um, but yeah, you can see a lot more detail. Uh, you can see if you can do anything with it. Uh, you might be able to download it or buy or license it uh, from, from Te Papa in this case. Um, so that's a really quick and an easy way of how uh, our site works. Um, you can use it to search for content, to filter for content, uh, as well as the media types as I just described. You can um, pick and choose who you want to see it from. Uh, in our case, um, because we've chosen an image, we're only seeing the records that are relative, sorry, we're only seeing content partners that have images. If I unselected image uh, and then went back to content partner, I now have all the other content partners that have all of the different types of media. So hopefully uh, our filtering makes it easy for you to, to find some of these records or look for them uh, in different ways if you know that a certain location or a certain content partner has them. Uh, in the third little bit that we have here is around collections, and that's a, um, a quick way. The word collection is used differently by our content partners, but what it means is that they would sort them into these things. So you could have a collection, in this case called Sound Collection. Uh, I'm not sure who exactly it's from. I'm going to take a guess at it and say it's from Nautonga. It may or may not be. Let's see if it is. Yep, 
there it is. It's a pretty good guess, live demonstration. Um, but all that means is that on uh, Tonga's uh, um, metadata or how they've organized, they've called the collection sound collection. And in this case, because these two uh, numbers match, 13 and 13, it won't make any difference. But it's just looking through the collections, uh, it's a quick way of um, trying to maybe track down where, where items might be if you're a researcher or you know a little bit more about what you're looking for. Uh, so hopefully that explains uh, really quickly um, what our site's designed to do in terms of making visible and accessible um, some of this content. Um, do I have time to do the user contributions or shall we? Okay, yep, I'm getting a thumbs up from Tups there. So we'll do that. So our user contributions is a little function uh, because one of the things that we do when we show the metadata here is that uh, a lot of this uh, or most of the content here is held by Sorry, all of the content is held by a content partner uh, that could be a museum, it could be a gallery, or it could be a library. And we realized as we were designing this that what happens with the metadata is it becomes uh, the version of the reality around this object. And it might just be one, one version, um, as you saw earlier on that, that uh, item I linked to, which was the weighing of the taro. The only version we have of that experience is from what Te Papa's recorded. Uh, and so what would it be to add um, your own version? You know, you might have been at a market like that and you might want to share some of your own memories or thoughts of that. So our user contribution is designed to allow you to do just that, to share your memories, your thoughts, your stories around uh, any of the objects that we display. Um, really importantly, we don't, uh, when you share it, a story with us or a memory with us, uh, it's held only on Digital Pacific. It's not uh, given back to or shared directly with the content partner because we wanted to recognize that you may not want your the content partner to have your story. It is, of course, your story uh, and an oral way of telling it all you're doing with this function is sharing your story um, with us so that others can see it. So your story could be uh, just a simple, uh, a little more detail and I'll click on this one from Rarotonga. So this is uh, the item that is held by Tapapa. This is the only description that it has, Rarotonga 1910 uh, by William Saunderson Cooper, gift of Andrew Cooper. Uh, it's a physical object and some location detail. This person has come along and just quite simply said it's Takamoa Theological College uh, and left that story there. Uh, and I'm assuming, Tapatu, this is, uh, you're from the Cooks, I'm assuming <laughs> that's what it is now. I don't know if it still is, maybe it still is. Um, but I think straight away, you see, just with those three words, it now is a, is a whole bunch more context, really, and a bit more um, understanding of what this thing is, rather than it just being this essentially just a photo of a building as Te Papa uh, sees it. And in the same way, uh, you can write it in your own language, uh, in Nguyen or in Cook Island, Maori, or in Chamorro, uh, you can write a little bit of a story. If I look down through some of these here, uh, there's some really lovely stories uh, of people discovering photos of their aunties or their nanas or their family as well. Um, and I think you can even have little simple memories. Uh, this is from uh, Ruka. She said, I used to go to kindergarten by the Lotoka Sugar Mill. When the mill was in production, I remember a sweet smell coming from the mill. And I think our hope with this little function is that uh, Pacific people and their stories and memories uh, can be made visible as well, alongside the digitized um, records that we also show. I'll very quickly go through um, what it is to build that. Uh, if you have a record that you want to add a story on, it's click this orange button, contribute your story. Um, we have a little bit of a blurb that explains what it is, which is sharing your thoughts and memories, um, help to create, make it more interesting. When you click get started, it's just a very simple web form uh, that comes to us, just all plain text. Uh, we have our terms and conditions that you can read. Uh, your name, you can choose to have your name displayed or to be anonymous and to have your name displayed as a guest. Uh, we ask you for your email. Now your email is only for us to uh, be able to contact you, and this is covered in our terms and conditions, if someone was to report your contribution or in, as it says here, if you enable, if you enable this option, the content partner might be able to contact you. So we just need a single point of contact. We never publish it. We never use it for anything uh, unless there is, and as I said, in the terms and conditions is to find um, the reason to contact you. You can record, excuse me, your place, your story title and your story, uh, and 
um, away you go. When you click next, uh, this gets published or there's a little bit of a confirmation about what it looks like on website and then the next phase is that it gets published. So we publish um, pretty quickly uh, and we have the capacity to um, engage if there's anything that's inappropriate that's published as well. I guess the last piece here, piece here as I just wrap this up is that this function also when we, when we say your place we really want to recognize what I said earlier that Pacific diaspora are spread uh, all around the globe. So um, you, you get to choose, it's, I suppose, the concept uh, of Tiranga Waiwa, your place to stand or your place to be. Um, you know, it, you could, the place that you list on this story could be the place that you are writing from. Uh, it could be the place where your story is set, uh, or it could be the place that you're most connected to uh, in terms of maybe your village um, or your, your maunga. So um, that, that this form is very simple. Uh, we hope it's simple and we look forward to having stories shared. Uh, our hope with it is that it recenters what it is to tell a Pacific story. Um, most of our records and our items are held in, in institutions that are far away from the Pacific. Uh, and we're really um, excited by what it could be to have Pacific people uh, reshape that telling of what Pacific cultural heritage is. Um, and yeah, we hope, hope it is of use to uh, any of you. Um, each of you have expertise uh, and knowledge, uh, and we would welcome the ability to share it alongside the other knowledge that is held by these institutions and our content partners. Um, I think that's me. I've wrapped through everything. I don't know if there's any questions. Not from any in the Zoom chat, I don't think. Oh, there's one in the Q&A, sorry. Um, here it is, thank you, Audrey. Um, where and how are you promoting this function as a way of knowledge sharing? Uh, <laughs> I guess as we're doing it here, uh, Audrey, we've written a few blogs about it. We've talked about it with different uh, people um, and, and through our promotion, uh, it sort of sits alongside what, what institutions are doing and as we share and highlight the records uh, and hopefully a little bit uh, like what we're doing, we're about to turn to with Soliana and Tapatu um, as Pacific Island people see the types of records that institutions hold um, and as, as we're able to shine a light or open a few doors into those spaces, um, people will be encouraged to, to write those stories. Um, yeah, we're happy to meet with anyone to share and show it. Um, I think uh, we can we keep promoting it as best we can when and where we can, but we'd welcome any other opportunities to do so. Cool. Um, lovely. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm like, I hope my team are still there at the end of a, the camera because they appear to have disappeared. Uh, because we're going to hand over to uh, cam, camera, camera operator Ulu, uh, who is going to take us through some live demonstrations of some of the content that the National Library of New Zealand holds. Thanks, guys. Cool. So, uh, me and Soliana are just going to share some of the items. Tag nowhere here at the National Library. Um, our first item here, if we can zoom up on the description, is children's exercises. So this is a few papers um, from 1953 to 1958. Um, and so this is all the information that National Library has of this item. Um, so we're going to show, so this looks like it's a a news article of the sports day here at um, Halavia School. And so what they've done is written what they've done <laughs> and talked about the story about it. So setting up for the sports day and going to the sports day and they've done a, an illustration of the three of four trucks passing the police van and on in their own car. And then they talk about the races. And then they've also got an illustration of the pole vaulting. Nice picture. So it doesn't actually tell us who did this illustration or wrote these stories, but they are a pretty cool stories. So we're thinking about from 1953 to 1958. So if you were at the school and you did these illustrations, let us know or let the library know. And also oh, yeah. the lunch, <laughs> washing before lunch. 
Cool. And then, so in the same folder, we also had another book. So this seems to be that they're maybe like illustrating a song or some movements. I'm not too sure. So they're talking about the horses, maybe the cats. So if you know, please let us know. So maybe a storybook about them and the cat or the dog and playing with them. Also, there was one other. So Moka Me Tule, which is another book that was in the folder. So this is all in the Nguyen language. So if you do know, please let us know what they're writing about. Maybe firewood, planting the trees. I think in another illustration, it looks like they might have been making a vaka or a canoe by cutting down the trees as well. So yes. Some of the interesting collections that not many of us know where they came from or who wrote them as well. So the next item we're going to go to is some poetry. Um, if you want to show the so manuscripts of poetry by school children and teaching notes by Hunt. So these are manuscripts of poetry from children that came from the islands. And I'll just, if you want to show the names of them. So we've got Henry Viliamu, who's from Samoa, nine years old, six years in New Zealand, mainly English at home. And Stephen Viliamu as well. Maseli Langa from Samoa, 10 years old. Hila Via Via. Lukito, who's from Nui, and for Folo Matile Lukito from Nui as well. So this came to us, uh, the date's around 1970. And so their school was actually in Kurirua East, our local school down the road in Kurirua. Um, Tim actually did some research on the teacher that um, wrote these teaching notes on these students. Um. Yeah, thanks, Tups. And I think the bit that blew me away, actually afterwards, uh, we, Tups and I uh, and Ulu had looked through a number of these resources, and, and I'm a former teacher, so I loved this this folder of, of, of um, beautifully uh, uh, printed <laughs> uh, records, um, because actually um, they show uh, a beautiful view of this teacher's thinking and what they're doing and their own reflections. Um, if you go through, it's about 40 or 50 pages, uh, as well as excuse me, the handwritten notes of the actual originals of the poetry that these children have written. And it was quite heartbreaking, some of the poems. I don't know if you can um, close in on the, the poem there, Ulu. Um, but, you know, these, as, as Tup said, really young children who've, who've come to um, Aotearoa. Uh, I wish I could go back to Samoa. I wish I was a big girl now because I want to work a teenage girl. I wish I was a baby so I can crawl around the floor. I wish I had hair like Mr. Hunt's got. I wish there was color all around me. I wish I was in Mexico. I wish I was going around, I am going around the world. And I wish I go back to my island and stay there. And I think that last line is, is pretty powerful uh, in lots of ways. And I think um, I'd taken some photos and it was a real privilege to sit for, you know, 15, 20 minutes and flick through these. And it wasn't until about a week later, I was looking back through my photos and um, I don't know if it's on the, the index card there, Ulu, and to the right, the whole name of the teacher uh, on the white, the National Library one. Um, yeah, it just says Mr. Hunt, and so I or by Hunt, and I wasn't thinking much of it, but it turns out these are actually the teaching notes of Sam Hunt, who's a very famous New Zealand poet, who for a number of years, quite a small period, and if you read on his Wikipedia page, um, Sam Samuel Percival Maitland Hunt. I'd never knew his middle middle names, but. Um, that sort of blew me away that for this the short period, Sam Hunt, who, as I say, is one of the more 
well-known uh, raconteurs and, and poets of Aotearoa taught um, these young island children. And it's a beautiful snapshot, I think, of, uh, um, you know, island children telling their stories and in their ways. And a beautiful, um, beautiful little story. I'd love to do an interview with, with Mr. Hunt at some point because it would be incredible to uh, uh, what his memories were of, of working with these children. So, yeah. Cool. Um, Tim, we've also got some comments in the chat. Can you read them out? Oh, uh, in our one. Oh, yes. Sorry. Uh, thank you. So, uh, from Io, uh, these, for, thank you. The very good resources for learning uh, Vangahau uh, Nui um, from Halavai School. Uh, and the, you just said that those resources were written for the primary school, uh, Tule Mo Moka. Oh, excellent. Thank you for that. Thank you. Sharing that. Awesome. Um, cool, so we're going to go on to our next item, which is um, some newspapers from Nui. So these are from March 1966 to December 1966. You can see the write-up. So the contributor is Nui Community Development Office, Subjects Community, okay, yep, Nui. <laughs> so this is one of the, the newspapers. And so the forecast for Nui, go up. For Nui up to Nui, midnight tonight is light easterly winds, uh, predominating cloudy with scattered showers or thunderstorms, seas mainly moderate. Um, I thought this um, newspaper article was pretty funny. So they've got the local news, but they also um, had a dance. So there's an article just down the bottom. Um, remember Friday night is going to be a big night for everybody, so don't hesitate to come. So for ladies, please don't be shy to bring your old papa, even if he's too old or too young. As long as you have a partner, just come. And then for gentlemen, Young Fuatas, please don't come and hang around outside. Come inside and dance. It's wasting your own time dressing nicely at home and then go to a dance and stand outside until the dance is finished. <laughs> so I thought those um the article was pretty funny about the, the dance. Um we got hobby classes, Norway Island Assembly elections of 1966, and then they had the newspaper translated in the way. So yeah, so we've got all of these collections here at the National Library. Um, it's a great resource to see what was happening at that time of the year. Cool. Oh yeah. So there's another article about who brought the wasps to Nui. So in 1910, it wasn't known that there were wasps in Nui. Here is a story of how wasps were introduced into his island. Whether it's true or false, it's up to you to comment on and send your comments to the editor. Wasps were thought to have been brought, to an, brought by a Nuean who had returned from Tonga. It was said that it was a man brought two wasps, a male and a female, um, come on, Kiriru, which is the trading schooner between Nui and Auckland, but occasionally made calls at Tonga en route to Nui. So the wasps in um, Nui are apparently bought by um, a Nuean from Tonga, which the article says. <laughs> cool. So we'll just move on to the next um, photograph that I've got out. <coughs> So these were the original prints from file from Fiji and Suva in 1996. And so we've got some images here. I think it's some of the delegates that came. Oh, Dixie. I'm not too sure what the year was for that one. Um, 1910. Also got some photographs here of their family in New Year as well. But don't have any information on who they were on the photograph. Um, so this 
it looks like scenery in Nui. So it looks like they've written Fiji and then crossed it out and actually said it's in Nui. And you can see kind of a small boat in the background there. So if you know where that location is, let us know. And one more image here as well. I don't know what that says. Blating boat channel. I think it's blasting a boat channel. <laughs> they would have been digging through the reef, I guess. Oh, so that's probably how the yeah. warfare was developed. Um, so this is another album, the Simpsons album, which was visit of members of the New Zealand legislature to Cook Islands and other islands. So they also stopped off in Nui. So that's the scenery of Nui. And I think this was in 1910 as well. Looks like a new year, new year meeting. I don't know whose umbrellas those were. <laughs> and then this one is honorary CH Mills presenting New Zealand and sign new year. Uh, picture of um, some of the warriors dancing. And then um, the next, the last image is the schoolhouse in Nui. Cool. And off. Oh, and this is the, the information that the library has on this album. So yeah, all of these um, items are accessible. Anyone can get them out. You just need to be come to the reading room to um, have a look at them. So this album is the Smiths album with Blackwood. Um, I think this was taken in 1886-1891. And so this is the only picture of Nui in it, which is of a church at Nui or Savage Island. Cool. And so this is some of the information. So this um, album was by Thomas Andrew during Pacific Voyage on Henderson and McFarlane Schooner, um, leaving Auckland on the 19th of September, 1886, and calling at Nui, Manahiki, Sawaro, uh, Starbuck Island, Christmas Island, and Swains Island. Cool. And so those are all my items. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is um, Suliana is going to share some of the resources here at the library. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the not yeah, you're all good. Thanks, guys. Yep. Um, Fakalo to everyone. Um, so I am, I forgot to what to say what I was. So I'm the, the um, research librarian specialist for the Pacific. So I'm here at the Alexander Turnbull Library. Um, and we work with materials from the National Library and the Alexander Turnbull Library. So I'm just going to show you guys a bit of our website, talk about the Pacifica Family History Guide, and then just a few items. Um, if we have time. So um, to see what items we have in the Turnbull Library or the National Library, you just go on to our website, which is netlib.govt.nz, and you see search our collections here, and you put in um, what it is that you want to look for. So if I want to look for new way, enter new way in there, and hopefully it will show all our results. Um, so similar to, to Digital Pacific's um, website, you can filter the, oh, well, actually, no, it's not similar. So you have the filter on the side. 
<laughs> and then you can filter by the format. So if you're after newspapers, you can click on newspapers, or if you're after books, um, you can click on books. Um, images, where else are images? Click on images. So if we clicked on images to sort it, to sort it out by, um, it will show you we have quite a few items that have been digitized for Newe. Um, if it's available, it will give you a preview of it on the side, and you'll just click on it and just scroll down. And it'll give you the details of that item, um, and then you'll go on to see original record, which is. Um, because we have two catalogues, we have the National Library catalog and we have um, the Alexander Turnbull um, catalog, which is the Alexander Turnbull Library is the unpublished items, which is like manuscripts, photographs, letters, journals, diaries, um, items of that nature. And then the National Library would have um, published um, material, so like books and maps. And so, yeah, you can access the item through here. And if you click on access digital content, um, that's where you can download it um, when it does load on our NDHA um, website. How do I go scroll down? Oh, sorry. So down here, these tools at the bottom here, um, it shows you so you can save the image, um, you can zoom in. Um, yeah, so if we wanted to zoom in, and click on that and hopefully see clearer faces or not so much but yeah that's how you use that um so just bear in mind yeah we our website does go to different like it'll take you to tiaki or ndha um different websites but yeah that's normal that's fine that's okay that's where our items are stored so if we just go back to um so items that may not be digitized, like it could be, for example, this one, because it's not showing me a preview of it on the side. Um, you'll just click on it, scroll down. So always go to see original record and that will take you where it originally is. And again, this items of Tiaki. So this is when you're gonna have to register. So to see items from the Turnbull Library and the National li um, Library, you have to register. And most of them are only available on, um, on site. So yeah, some, not many items have been digitized, but most of them are available on site and you're gonna have to come in to view them. So this is when you do the whole, you wanna have to log in to request item. So this is one registration, which is the real me or Tiaki. And this is where you go create your account. And then with, if we go back to a national library, um, just go back to homepage. And then if we scroll down to, this has got um, search the collections. So that's where it has the national library catalog, Turnbull archival collection, which is what we're on, on which is Tiaki or the real me registration. Um, of the National Library catalog, you have to make sure you click on that one, on that link, and then where it says sign in, unless you haven't signed in, or um, you'll have to register. So this is where you go in to register. So yeah, usually just fill out those details and then um, submit, and then you can sign in. So what I wanted to point out to you guys. Um, was that we do have an Ask a Librarian service um, at the top here. So if you have a question that um, we can, our team can spend up to two hours on answering your research questions, but we do have um, rules and stuff um, in regards to that. So don't think we're going to be your last minute answer to your assignment or something, because um, you're just going to join the queue and we have like a 15 working day turnaround. around. So yeah, just fill out this form or if you have a picture you want us to locate or something, that's where you can add in the attachment part down here. Um, and then our team can get back to, or if it's a Pacific related inquiry, it'll be given to me and then I'll work on it and then get back to you. Um, if you scroll down to the bottom of the website, you can see our opening hours. Um, if you wanted to an answer straight away, um, then it's best that you contact our 0800 number, which is under here when we're open during our reading 
room hours, so 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. That's when um, someone's on the, is monitoring the phone, or unless you come into the reading room um, yourself if, um, and we can help you look for items or register or, um, yeah, help you with your inquiry. So I just want to show you our guide. Um, so to go to our guide, so any researchers, if it's your first time where it says use the library, researchers, definitely click on that link and read up on all the information and that can give you a back background on how to start um, your research and um, see where it says registering requesting, um, all the info's in there and making the most of your visit. So I'm going to go to our research guide. So just click under there where it says research guides. And I'm going to take you to our Pacifica family history one. So um, this guide is still a work in progress. Um, we managed to get most of it up of most of the Pacific countries um, a couple of months ago. So if you just want to click on New Air, because it's New Air Language Week, we're going to focus on New Air. And we'll just come up with some of the resources that we do have at um, the Turnbull Library or um, Howard by National Library. So most of our items are these, like the, we have um, links to the family search page. Um, we also have the many Pacific Manuscripts Bureau items, um, and they have some records on microfilm um, for marriages and deaths and births. Um, we also have some, so these are all like microfilms, or they're on, yeah. Um, they are all, you will have to, you can't just request these. Um, sorry, you can't just come in and view them, you'll have to request them. So yeah, that's where you have to register and then request. Um, we also have some manuscripts on family, some people's family um, history. We have an interview with Sir Robert Rex, who was the first premier of New Air. And here are just some of the newspapers that we have, which um, top two showed you guys the, it was the Tohitala Niue, yeah, Tohitala Niue. Um, some of them look like newspapers and some of them are just like big books bound together and they're the newspapers. So everything comes like in different shapes and forms. So these are also some of the books that we do have um, for um, some of the um, family trees. Um, so I'm going to show you guys this item, the Akao Manga Fawa Pokitoa Havilimoto Osikai, the family tree of Pokitoa Havilimoto Osikai. So we'll just pause on our, our um, guide for now. But any questions you have, just ask us, um, send to these guys, um, or use our Ask a Librarian service. So we'll pause here and I'll go over to show you this item. So this is the um yeah. <laughs> so this is the book that um we were talking about of um this uh, family tree that they put together, this family put together. Um and it's here in the National Library Collection. So the family tree of Pokitoa, Havili Motu Osikai, and it's edited by Molina Moli Pikingia, Snow Haile Tona, and Zora Felo. So this was printed in 2012 um, here in Auckland. So yeah, this is just what the book looks like, the different chapters. Um, the family. So anyone related to these guys, then definitely come by and have a look at this book. We have it here in our collections. We'll go on to the next item. So this is, we have a lot of items on Robert Rex. So if you are related to him, search him up and come and have a look, especially if you're here on Wellington. So um, this belongs to a collection by Kathleen Montagu Hancock. So she's got a lot of photographed albums and um, 
the item was titled Robert Ricks Knighted on New Year. So this is when he became Sir Robert Ricks. So if you just look, you know, some of the things you think you'll have come up with heaps of items, sometimes there's only two. And with this particular collection, there's only two. So I'm not sure who the woman is, but I'm pretty sure that's um, Sir, um, Sir Ricks over here. Um, so yeah, that's just one of the, some of the items we have on them. On him, sorry. If we go to, to our next item, this is a map from 1920. Um, it's called New Guy from the Admir Admiralty chart. Um, and it just looks like it's been like a hand drawn map of New and all the different um, villages on there. And it's just basically a, just a bit smaller than A4, so A4 size. So yeah, it's just showing roads and tracks. Um, that's what the details say. For this item, we'll go on to our next one. Yeah, so that's from 1920. Um, yeah, that one's from 1920. So to the next one. So this is a photograph album that looks to have been um, a celebration of the London Missionary Society. Um, so this looks like the um, New Year celebration. So it was, if we just, so the title says New Year Centennial and it's celebrating 1846 to 1946. It also has a bit of um, and and Samoa in there. So this is the photograph album here. How did we get this? Okay, it doesn't show how. Oh, so this was part of um, the Congregational Union of New Zealand Records. So someone donated a number of records um, to churches here in New Zealand and the London Missionary Society. And this photograph album was a part of those um, albums. So we'll just open it up. So this one's cool because it has a bit of information um, of New Way at the beginning. So with each country, they have a bit of information um, that they'll put together for the photo album. New Way has a couple of pages. And they have this cool map. It's the end of all the info. Over here, it's like New Way or Savage Island. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and then we'll just go on to the photographs. So as you can see, they have numbers. And then on the side over here, they have those numbers and the details. Um, lucky for this one, they already provided the information with the photographs, otherwise we have a team here that has to do the arrangement, the description. Um, the A and D team here at Turnbull. So yeah, still more info it's around taken from Centennial College, where these photographs are taken from, the views. And we have some of the missionaries. So we have um, Reverend and Mrs. C. B. Harrell, and also Mr. and uh, Mrs. C. L. Link. See ya, Link, see ya. And so we have the mission house here. So the info there is from the mission house here at um, Alofi um, Sunday School and Bible class on the right. So this is it. Oh, so there it is. So it says on the right. Um, and then it says the New Wear Memorial, um, War Memorial is on the left center, so I'm assuming it must be that one. And then number 10 is the Centennial Hall. Um, and here are some men that helped with the building. Um, and they call it Centennial Pinia Nina. 
And we have Mrs. Langshaw opening the door. Oh, awesome. Wow, that's cool. So the Centennial Hall still stands there today. Um, one of our comments that we put through. Um, so yeah, these are just photographs of the celebration. Um, we have um, 12 of the pastors here in image number 26. Akwako and 60 deacons. Siakona. We'll just go to the next page. So yeah, we'll just leave it at that for that photograph. But yeah, definitely feel free to come in um, and view these items, like register, view them if you are here in Wellington or get your family members to come in. Um, they're open to everyone. There's no restrictions. So thank you. I'll give it to Tafa too. And Tim. So Liana, one question. Um, I don't know if you can hear me. I was going <laughs> to, as we come back. Oh, should I come back then? Um, I was going to ask uh, uh, Soliana if um, I'll just undo that one. Oh yeah, um, if yeah, no, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> um, that photo album that, um, that you just done is that is that. Uh, um... Is that is that uh, digitized? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. So people would have to come in to see those pieces, yeah. which is really cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. I think only some of the albums that I showed mm, has been digitized. The so file prints. The file prints, yeah. yeah. And so they're also accessible on Digital Pacific. But otherwise, uh, the manuscripts or the papers, they haven't been digitized. Mm. But yeah, um, you can come in and get a printed copy if you like. I'm not too sure how much it costs, but I think you put it in eight. And... Yeah, I dropped the link into the chat there for people to see it. Um, thank you for that. Um, did any, I can't see any more questions in the chat, but if anyone wanted to, um, we've kind of wrapped up our presentation. Thank you to all three of you. Thank you to camera operator Ulu for his uh, fine work there. Um, <laughs> and uh, did, uh, any of any of those in the Zoom chat have any questions, or if you put your hand up, we can I can turn on your audio if you wanted to ask us a question live or in person. It's all live, I suppose, um, or even just any comments or thoughts. Oh, sorry, Facebook's closed for me, but I've closed my Facebook. Were there any comments on Facebook? Um. No, just like wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow is good. Wow is good. All right. Um, uh, so, yes. Can I just give a shout out to Eel that's been on the chat? Um, yeah. <laughs> Eel's quite. We've, we've known each other for a, for a while, but um, oh. he's got a pretty big standing in the Nui community oh, and his contribution to the Nui language. So, um, thanks, bro, for tuning in. Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks oh, for sharing. I mean, thank you. Is he in Wellington or? Oh, sure. I think he's in Auckland, actually. <laughs> 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 we, went to, we went to uni together, so. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, right, Auckland. <laughs> Eo, yeah. Eo, I'm just going to allow you to talk so you can respond to, uh, if, if your mic's working, you can respond to your, your university brother here. All <laughs> right. Thank you so much, uh, Ulu and the team. That, that was quite resourceful. Um, with the info and just you know taking through the apologies about the sounds in the background yeah but uh, that was really good i'm i never knew there were some of the resources available at um from the library would would um that would help some of our people who are doing some research mm. at, at the moment and especially the centennial or the lms book mm, yeah. which looks at the theological college mm. that, that used to train a lot of uh new air pastors besides the Malua Theological College. But thank you very much for today. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. Thanks for joining in. Thank oh, well. <laughs> oh, yes.
Um, Joan also mentioned, maybe um, Tim, share about your talk tomorrow. Oh, yes. So thank you um, for that. Um, yeah, basically tomorrow uh, during uh, there's a uh, connecting with as part of the connecting to collection series, which is um, run by uh, Alexander Turnbull Library, National Library of New Zealand. Um, myself and my colleague at Digital NZ are both presenting uh, on um, our ways of, well, I've sort of presented earlier today, but also we'll repeat it tomorrow of how we have created different ways of people sharing their own knowledge uh, around um, collections uh, or items or records. Um, so please join us um, for that. Be a bit of a double whammy, the digital NZ side, as well as the digital Pacific side. So um, yeah, they're, they're slightly different, but we'd welcome you along to that. Uh, that is at 12 o'clock uh, on, on Zoom. Um, if you go to either the National Library um, or our Digital Pacific Facebook page, you can find the details there um, of how to register and, and join that um, you know, Zoom Talanoa as well. So oh, and on Thursday, we also have another webinar with Patrick Leno and Sheila. Um, they're going to be talking about some of the resources that we've, they've developed on Digital Pacific, Lolongo Nui. Um, and seeing how um, songs and lyrics around Nguyen language can uplift the Nguyen language. So yeah, that will be from 12 to 1 on Thursday. So yes. join us. That'll be great. Be great, great to hear from them and the work they're doing with the Nguyen community as well. Um, uh, and yeah, thank you so much to everyone who's joined us today. Um, this will be recorded and a little bit of editing uh, to, you know, fix up. No, just a little bit of editing, just to tidy it up, bit of, bit of, uh, you know, lens effect on Ulu's head there. Um, but we will post it on, uh, <laughs> on, um, uh, on our YouTube channel and also on our Facebook page as well. Um, so if you want to share it beyond for anyone who couldn't make it today. Um, but for now, I just say um, vinaka and thank you to everyone who could join us. Uh, have a wonderful day and enjoy the rest of Nguyen Language Week wherever you are. Take care, everyone. It's like this, the bits that are going to go viral uh, uh, of Ulu sitting behind you, tutuing with his <laughs> Just like... <laughs> Oh, sorry. Get out. In the back, in the back, our task force green guy. I'm looking at this. It's like, it's like, I'm going to walk and sit right in the middle of the frame. Special <laughs> <laughs>